Let's see what the stew has for us today. Previously on Gnomecast. Let me ask a thing here. I feel like we could get two podcasts out of this topic. How do you all feel about going for another, like, do you feel like going for another 15, 20 minutes? And I like, it? Let me be clear. With this group of people, I will talk forever. So let's do it. So what is, you know, what, what constitutes you as a professional? Because this is such a collaborative, everybody just kind of engages in it at the same time. Like a GM could not run without the players. Players could not do it without, you know, I mean, there are solo games and other stuff like that, but it's so unstructured in those ways. So how do you make professional standards? Here's a question, though. Like, where, do we, where are we coming from? Are we talking minimum professionalism or livable professionalism? Minimal, do I get paid for it? I guess you're professional. Um, versus, like, livable, can you live only doing this and or maybe this and another part-time job? I think that would be enough. Can you part-time job this? Mm. Which, yeah. I, I mean, I know I have been paid for things that I definitely shouldn't have been paid for the amount of effort I put into them, mm. but... That's my Adobe game. That was the Adobe <laughs> game. <laughs> it, Adobe, if you're listening to this, I need you to know that you got a spectacular top shelf experience <laughs> no matter what else you're hearing on Can this. I also <laughs> say Can I Adobe? Your person? Yeah. I would actually prefer... I would actually have liked it if Adobe paid me in Adobe products. Yeah. I would be like... That made me feel a lot better. <laughs> Here's the lifetime subway five dollar foot long card <laughs> to go back to a community reference. But but yeah, mm -hmm. no. So I mean, what 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 constitutes professionalism for a game? Like, do you have to be held a certain like with HR? Like, here are things you can and cannot say. That's part of the professional code of working at our place. Oh, you know that everybody expects that, which is just common decency in some ways, but. When you get that GM who's like, no, not in my game, are they still a professional if they're getting paid? I mean, do you have, so two things. I, I want to I establish that professionalism has two angles within this. The first is, can mm -hmm. you get paid enough money to live? And that is a whole other discussion that I need, think needs to be had around <laughs> what people are, are allowed to live with making in the United States now, which is, spoiler alert, not enough. But the second one is, like again, that level of professional conduct, that level of skill. My, my friend Joe, who I'm pretty sure listens to these, has been talking for at least a decade about essentially a gamer certification and how that almost becomes necessary what? because people are people are building their own. So he likes the analogy of a computer. And sorry, Joe, I'm stealing all of your stuff. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll try to sell your books and stuff because you're awesome. <laughs> but uh, he said, if, if we think of RPGs as computer games, when we sell computer games, we sell somebody a game and they put it on their computer. When we're selling somebody an RPG, we're expecting them to build their own computer, find their own power, and still run that oh, game. And mm -hmm. we are surprised at the fact that people don't have as much fun as they could with it. That's a good point. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not selling people a fully packaged game. We're selling them like a, a, make, your, a, a make your own a game kit. The IKEA game experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Don't be IKEA. Yeah, I, I, it, it's it's very IKEA like, or like uh, the old Radio Shack build your computer kit sort of things. You know, yeah, that's only fun for certain people, like like building Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and wiring something up. Like I've been looking at, oh, I could pay 150 bucks to to build an IR frame for my my gaming battle map. Or I could do 50 and then learn and remember enough of the Python to build in the, mm -hmm. the things that like, oh, you know what, maybe I'll do, you know, and then I have to make that that weighing. What do I do? Do I do it the easy way or the not? And if you're paying for it or, or if mm -hmm. it's professional, it almost has to be that other easy, like, you know, something that's so build it yourself. Can, can you actually write a set of standards of this is what you get your certification on, mm -hmm. you know? Because it's different for this game, or different for that game, or different for this indie narrative game. I mean, we have lots of certifications for things that don't need certifications. I think it could be done. It's a question of whether it's worth it. I'd like right. a certification. I'd like to put something on my wall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's printouts of a cool little certificate are something everybody loves. We've loved it since elementary school when our things got put up on the refrigerator and our parents said, I guess this will do. You could do better. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, it's completely, it's a bit, it's a bit, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's um, a bit. <laughs> but, okay, so D, so outside of though that, like, oh, I got to put a cool thing on my wall saying mm -hmm. I've done this cool thing, what would that certification get you? Like, in, in practical terms, as a per person doing professional GMing. A 
Okay, so uh, kind of certification, like, I don't even think that would, like, at the rate in which I'm paid, if I had a certification, I wouldn't even say it would, I wouldn't be able to use that to say, oh, this is why you should pay me more. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, at the end of the day, the players will decide if something is worth it to them or not. Mm -hmm. Like, I can sneak people in into, like, maybe a game, but if they cut, but the, for, to make it livable, they have to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. So I can't just tell you I'm a professional, but here's the reason you pay me more. I can only really at any given point be like, here's why you should come back to me afterwards. And that, oh, I have a level two GMing certi certificate. We'll wouldn't do anything. necessarily. It's like, oh, that's great. That's nice. That What does that mean? You know, does that mean you're going to be fun for my in experiences and enjoyment? You know, my tastes. It's so subjective. It's like it's like how do we even rank? We we can how do we rank chefs? You know, the, mm -hmm. I, there do you there are chef levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Michelin level stars. Or one, two, like red seal, like uh, like I guess that something you have to do for jamming. But then at the end of the day, it's still subjective. Like a top level chef could make me something. I'd be like, oh, this is shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it gets you in the door. Like if if I have just see that's not survivable. That's not professional. But it still gets you in the door. If I'm looking to spend. $100 on a gaming session, and probably more than that if we're trying to have people have a reasonable standard of living. If it's just this guy with a Hawaiian shirt, and I don't trust how he talks to people that I've seen him talk to, I'm not going to pay him 100 bucks. Are you also describing Gary Gygax again? <laughs> I did not intentionally. Because he have definitely just did. <laughs> I might have opinions about Gary Gygax that, I, that I'm telegraphing a little bit too clearly. They're, they're deep-seated. And, like, and oh. in the name of professionalism. Right. Sorry, sorry, John. I'm just going to have to give you a squirt bottle at some point. <laughs> but, uh, so, but so there's this... So this random person off the street that says they're the best GM I've ever encountered. Am I going to pay them 100 bucks? I have no idea what I'm getting, but if they have this certification from, you know, wizards that says I am a certified level two GM, I know that they're not going to come in and like call people horrible names. They're going to have a plot with a beginning, middle and end. They're going to have dice rolls that matter to the things that happen okay. within the narrative. If we're going to talk about certification and let's say, let's use Wizard of the Coast as an example here. It means there's going to be, there's going to be minimum, let's say, classes or like lectures or things, a process in which you need to get through in which uh, Wizard of the Coast could then certify you. Mm -hmm. That is like, uh -huh. that is, I, I actually, when it once put in that frame, I don't think it's impossible that that might happen in the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. But that would be for a very specific running for Wizards of the Coast. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. so, and, and uh, there are places that already do that sort of thing. You want to go run for this rather large company? You must know these things. Prove you know this game. Do these, mm -hmm. you know, things. And then they have you run on their behalf at conventions. Wizards of the Coast has so much power right now mm -hmm. that if they did put out the kind of uh, certification... It would be, I think, widely accepted enough for D and D. That, D &D. That's a one segment thing. Well, though. but I mean, yeah. like certifications are always going to emerge from the corporate culture in general. A autonomous farming collectives don't have agricultural certifications. It always comes from that need to have structure and scale. And now we're in corporation talk. Oh my god, this is great. <laughs> That's the only time you'll ever hear the phrase corporation and great in the same sentence, I think, uh, on a podcast that I'm on. And But I do agree. That's, it's, I think that there are valuable things that can come out of that. Well, and, and so, you know, the, the, God, I keep coming back to, but not all games are the same. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to talk professionalism, there's so many factors we pull in. Because could you become a professionally certified for a that, – that fits the same for a game of fiasco – or a game of like lasers and feelings as like there there's so many different things to that and Shadowrun. You know? If someone like creates like um I know I had a friend that was uh considering this, but they wanted to create some kind of like guild and then actual guild for like game mm -hmm. runners, if that got the level of like generalized acceptance, that could work. Wizards of the Coast wouldn't necessarily be if Wizards of the Coast uh supported that kind of like generalized game mastery sort of thing, that would be doable. But outside of that, I don't think that's really going to happen for a while. So the the corporate world that I'm, this is me, again, pulling in that great corporate stuff, uh, because it's what I know. But uh, I exist in a consulting world with a specific set of consulting certifications that are theoretically transferable between restaurants and psychologists and airplane manufacturers. And if we go out and seek people, if I, if I am working for a behavioral health company, 
and I am going out seeking people to do the job that I do, I would still go out to an airport if they have that same certification, even though their certification is in airplane building and not behavioral science, because the fundamentals of it are going to transfer. And I think that's probably true to some degree of RPGs. Fundamentals of mm. professionalism in terms of respect, storytelling, everything else is just mechanics we toss on top. And that's definitely an oversimplification. But I, I think it could transfer if a company like Wizards decided to do that. So you're saying if it's more of a behavioral thing rather than specifically a skills thing? I, I think there's an element of both, reasonably. I mean, we've all had the horror stories at conventions where we've had the game that we wish we would have left. And I think any certification would have to make sure that that doesn't happen. What was it? Two years ago, there was like a major thing about like a UK uh, one where uh, like a group of players got um, a... Nah, I don't want to say it, but it, got, it, it, like, it blew up on Twitter. Yeah, I, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. They they got rather uh, outside the bounds of decent conversation and respect for other people. Right. Yeah. They were asshats. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I mean, I think any certification should at, at a baseline have don't really do really don't do that. Here's an enforcement mechanism to make sure that you get your certification yanked if we find out that you did this. Mm -hmm. And like, that's going to be a part of it. And that's going to relieve a lot of people in vulnerable positions, I think, that would otherwise be nervous about engaging in that kind of game. So, so let, me, let me stop stirring the pot a bit and point us to something that's a good point of discussion. In, in doing research for this to kind of like say what's out there, what, you know, what haven't I looked up in the last couple of weeks, uh, there's a website called startplaying.games where you go, you request somebody, you know, you can look for them. And the way they do a lot of this stuff, you can go to browse GMs and find a GM and they kind of have a profile. And because like... Certifications are great, but uh, Uber drivers don't have certifications. They have reviews. Does this and and I think this is a better thing to look at because have you been reviewed? Have people said good things? Does somebody throw up some red flags about you? You know that that is how they're doing this, but they're also saying like how many games you've hosted, what your strengths are. There are kind of little profiles on them of are you more narrative? Are you more crunchy? What systems do you like? And you almost need that template, I think, rather than a kind of one size fits all sort of thing. Interesting. So, interesting. So I would actually argue that Uber drivers do have certifications. They're called driver's licenses and background checks. Uh, <laughs> and those point. are important parts of make an argument that that's not happening at the level it should. But okay. yeah, like I, I think that that's both. We need both and. <laughs> almost like, you know, the driver's license and the background checks is. Are you kind of a scumbag based on broad societal definitions? Mm -hmm. Are you going to get in a car and go mad maxing it off on the roads? Right. Okay, mm -hmm. you're not getting your driver's license, mm -hmm. you know, and background checks like, oh, God, and that's background checks are uh, uh, another whole big thing because what people considered good in the 80s is not what we consider good and mm -hmm. acceptable now, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, yeah, but what do you do to make those sort of like concrete this is what's acceptable and this is what's not or do you go on user reviews you know that's a hard <laughs> question see i stopped stirring the pot and i just kicked it over now we need another one we need another pot <laughs> i mean i think that's that's a decision that we as a community because we speak with a single voice we are a monolith uh absolutely <laughs> uh, we, we can and should decide that for ourselves yeah. what is what standards are we setting but I mean, what standards you set is the baseline, because, you know, there, there are baseline things I would expect of a GM. I would leave their game. But if I paid for a game, expected that level of professionalism, and then mm -hmm. it wasn't met, I would be, you know... I could kill the interest in law players. Uh-huh. But, like, it, would I be reasonable to go Kevin or Karen on the group that organized it? Not that you should ever go Kevin or Karen mm -hmm. on anything. But, like... How do you get that restitution then? You know, like right now I can call up and deal with an issue with my credit card by talking to the customer support rep, talking to the next one, talking to the next one, finally raising my voice, getting to the person who goes, oh, hold on, click, that's done. Do we want to see that in gaming? Is there a way to avoid that? <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, no. This I'm is me like, trying I'm... to say professional, stay professional and not get up on my soapboxes about that, but that's, that's commoditization. Do we want that for ourselves? Do we want that in this hobby? Like, right. I think, it, like... It, I think it's eventually okay. So what I'm thinking about in the, like the next thirty years, something like this is eventually going to happen, regardless of whether or not we want it to occur. Because someone's going to 
think of how to do this. And uh, as with that start playing dot games thing, I don't like uh, is that is that like, is that the link? As I tried to use, I can find start it. playing dot games. Yeah. So in like in that sort of case, like there's gonna be people that are gonna be trying to do this, and it really only really matters. Like I, I think the ones that's are eventually gonna get popular are the ones that actually work. I'm hoping but the also, market's gonna like well yeah. <laughs> I, I know somebody who tried to hire me to build something very similar to this, and I just turned them right down because one, their their idea of monetization was not quite what I like, but also because I'm like, I don't I don't know that I necessarily want to help push us that much farther along this path, you know? And like you said, it's gonna happen eventually. Somebody's gonna do it. I don't know that me doing it can help it avoid some of the pitfalls if every industry gets as it gets bigger, you know. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. This all this stuff that we're kind of doing the certification, um, a little bit of a pivot because like I don't really have an answer for 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 this question that you posed. Um, I know it's all online. Like, I I personally work uh, you know the whole corporate thing. Like I can do it. Um, I'm doing it online too, but I can like feasibly do it offline once like the 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 COVID is gone. Mm -hmm. But if there's gonna be a large amount of professionalism. Is that doable in local scenes or does it primarily have to be focused online? Well, you know, I, I might argue that conventions are almost a way you do that, you know. But, like then, that's, in, but then that's not livable then. That's like that you'd you'd have you would have pro GMs doing a convention circuit. Right. Which which is how I mean a mm -hmm. lot of uh Hollywood stars make their extra money, like, oh yeah, I'm on uh, you know, whatever this show was, and now I charge twenty dollars per autograph. I, I genuinely find myself wondering how people like professional trombone players do this. And that's the only instrument I could think of off the top of my head, but it's probably a terrible choice. Viola, which I'm probably mispronouncing because I'm not classy. I think, I, th but, I, think, I think it's viola. Okay, yes, got it right. Um, but so what you have is expensive, highly skilled, very subjective, limited audience and appetite for it still kind of making a living. And I feel terrible because I know one or two people that do this for a living and I have no idea how they do it. Yeah. Like I, I know a couple of people in the music scene and that is not their primary means of, yeah. of money. And most people I know in RPGs, like they don't make a fully livable wage every year. They right. make a big bunch and move that through to their next project, hopefully while supplementing with freelance. Oh my God, that sounds like a nightmare. Oh, oh, yeah. That's why I will never try to full time do this. I like paying my mortgage reliably. Yeah, same. And and I, I have to wonder how many of the people that are afraid to sort of bring this back to the question of paid GMing, how many people are afraid to dip their toes into it at first at all because they know how difficult it is to make a living in a corporate world. How much harder must it be to do that with your application? I'm uh... please <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, because you you you've done it. You're doing it. I'm doing it. It's like still not perfect. Like I get, I get like a couple like a week, but also I'm half the other time I'm streaming. So that's another thing, but also I'm making my streaming about uh, GMing and like, and like tabletop. So I, 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 I guess I'm slowly inching in that direction. Mm -hmm. Well, but your, your streaming is also promoting the other side. So it's exactly. almost like, Hey, we're doing the band show. We make our money at the merch table. Kind of. That's a, that's not a bad uh, example. Well, then you come back to the like, well, I, I always love the episode of Metalocalypse where they all join a Metalocalypse cover band because they lost love for playing the music as Metalocalypse. So they just cover all their own songs but play different instruments. And it's like, well, again, do you then like, yeah, I, I have finally cracked how to make money off of this mm -hmm. and I no longer enjoy it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I'm afraid of. That's why I'd never do it. I, I dipped my toe in the professional world of rpgs once when i was much much younger and the experience was so terrible that i never want to do it again harrowing yeah i i love games i love the people i never want to try to make my meals from it because i'm afraid that i would not enjoy it anymore and and that honestly d is the thing that i respect most for you for what you do because you're you're doing it i don't know that um I could. here's the thing uh and maybe i'm able to do it so well because i've never liked fiving in the first place um, <gasps> 
That's fine. <laughs> I mean, I love 5e, but I love that you said that, too. That's so great. Okay. So, like, it's if if you told me, okay, you know, you're, you're making a really good point, because if you told me I would, uh, would I want to be paid to run my favorite system in the world? By the way, Savage Worlds, this isn't a shill. I wish they sponsored me, but they don't. Um, <laughs> would I want to be paid to run Savage Worlds? I don't think so. Am I okay with running 5e? Absolutely. I never liked it in the first place. Well, because it's like, oh, I'm happy to go off and do my job as an accountant. When I come home, I'm going to go play trombone. Like, if, yeah. if, when you're a chef, when you're a chef, you don't make yourself full course meals. You can if you want to. But mm -hmm. typically when I when, when I did that for a bit, I made myself a grilled cheese sandwich, man. It was a good yeah. grilled cheese sandwich. but mm -hmm. I, Unless you're doing it because you love the art so much mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, at home, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to do other things, you know. Grilled cheese yeah. sandwiches are an art. No, all right. So well, that was um, a really good point, Chuck. That like put it into perspective for me. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. So I'm going to wrap us up here because we are getting to the 60 minute mark now and just <laughs> about where we can cut it into two episodes. And uh, uh, Rob will not have my head for being unprofessional. Oh, that's fantastic. That was a great conversation. It, it, it's, it's so big and so complex. Mm hmm. All right, so uh, we're we're now at the end of part two of that, uh, cutting it off just so that we can make sure Rob and Angela don't come and and beat up Chuck, you know, as, as was the possibility at the end of the last episode. Um, I, I think we paid them off well enough to do that, but let's uh, let's move on to some other professional things. Like funding Gnome Stew. This show is funded by the Gnome Stew Patreon. You too can become a Patreon backer by following the Patreon link on the Gnome Stew website to the Gnome Stew Patreon. This ad is brought to you by. Gnome Stew's Game Master Certification. We can tell others if you're good. Maybe. Depending on what they like. And what you're running. And what games you're doing. Look, just buy it and get your certification on the wall. Our diploma mill is running now. Only 999 gold pieces, plus 15 gold pieces shipping and handling. If you're enjoying the Gnomecast, you'll probably like many of the other misdirected Mark shows. Here's one to check out. Like bonus experience. Ryan and Monica are two old friends exploring gameplay and design through the lens of diversity, while also sharing some of the dumbest humor gaming has to offer. All right. So uh, as we did last time, uh, you know, you can find all of us at GnomeStew.com, GnomeStew on Twitter, and GnomeStew on Facebook. Where can we find you out in the great wide world? Yeah, Chuck. Uh, at Innocuous Chuck on Twitter, I'm usually locked. Go ahead and ask. We'll both probably regret it. D, where do we find you? <laughs> You can find me at my my Twitter, my Twitch, and now my YouTube at Dice Queen D D I C E Q U E E N D I. I forgot how to spell my own name. Uh, John. Uh, yeah, I, I can be found at, at John Arcadian, which is J O H N A R C A. -D. D-I-A-N, which I, I always confuse people when I do that in the military alphabet, the American military alphabet. They're like, wait, I don't know that. Just say it again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I can be found there sometimes on Twitter, sometimes on Facebook, but probably not really. All right. So uh, after part two, do you think we voted the stew? Do you think we kept it professional enough? I hope so. I need to take down those nails and boards from my front door. <laughs> We've got so much to think about for the future and I am terrified and titillated yes Gnomecast is hosted by Misdirected Mark Productions the media arm of Encoded Designs where can we find you out in the great white water uh,